everyone welcome back to another video welcome back to advent of code today we are covering day five day five takes place at the north pole where we have an elf that needs help with a printer been there done that the pages of the sleigh launch safety manual must be printed in a specific order based on specific rules and these rules and the sequences of the pages which need to be printed are given to us as our input the rules look something like x pipe y and that means that x must be printed before the page y so that the safety manual makes sense when we're reading it. So we got an input file which has the rules that we need to follow and it has the pages that we need to print. Our job for part one is to check if each sequence follows the rules and then for valid sequences, we need to find the middle page number and sum it up. And then for part two, we need to pay attention to the invalid sequences and we need to see if there's any way we can reorder them so that they are compliant with the rules and then compute and sum their middle pages as well. So I solved part one using hash maps, actually. Hash maps, as we all know, offer constant time lookups, and that's why they seemed very appealing to me for this exercise. If we were to solve this problem on paper, what we would do is that we would take each number of the sequence and we would look it up on our rules and see what the dependencies are and what the rules are. We would basically try to figure out what needs to come before this number and what needs to come after to see if our sequence is valid, right? So that is what I tried to do with a hash map. I designed a nested hash map where the keys are the numbers and my rules. And the final value is the relationship between each pair of numbers so that I can look it up in constant time. For example, if we have one pipe five, meaning one comes before five in our rules, I would create a hash map which has a key of one pointing to another hash map which has a key of five and a value of B. And this reads as one comes before five. Then I have another entry in the hash map where five is the key and uh, this points to a second hash map where one is the key and the value is a and this reads as five is before one. Basically you start information in both ways with what comes before and what comes after so that you can look it up in constant time. Once we have the hash map we then look through the sequences and for every sequence we check if it respects the rules. So basically the sequence of pages will be valid if for every page i the pages that come before it have a B relationship with the current page and all the pages that come after have an A relationship with the current page. So the last hurdle to complete part one was to sum up the middle elements of the valid sequences and this can be done with a little function that checks the length of each sequence and then indexes to the middle. You can do this using an integer division by two. The exercise doesn't specify what should happen if you have an even length sequence so I just treated it as a default from an integer division by two, which I believe rounds it up. And then I got to the right answer for part one. I think hash maps are ideal for these exercises because they provide efficient lookups and updates and you can quickly validate the ordering constraints between pages. Also the ability of hash maps to associate keys to different kinds of values makes it easier to represent our constraints and the rules. So I was able to associate a key to another hash map, which again contains a key and finally the value which represents the relationship between key one and key two. To be perfectly transparent, I did not have time to solve part two. Part two is a bit time consuming in my opinion, but I did read through it and I would approach it using a graph. I would basically try to solve it by building a graph and building another hash map and I will explain why. <laughs> I would basically build a directed graph where the numbers from the rules are the vertices and their connections are the edges. And while I would build the graph, I would use a hash map to keep track of how many numbers will have to come after each number so that we know how much buffer there needs to be between the numbers. So for every element in your graph, you want to know how many elements you need that come before that and how many elements you need to come after that number. You can build this up based on the rules. And since you are already looping or kind of like traversing the rules, to be able to build your graph, I think you can build this hash map at the same time. And once you have the graph and you have this hash map with how many you need before and after each number, then I would sort the graph based on how many after elements we have for each number. Once we have the sorted graph, I think we can check if we can build each sequence using the graph. I'm not sure if this would work, especially this last part on how we use the graph specifically to try to um, see if reordering the numbers would work, but regardless, I do think that a graph is a good place to start and having the hash map with how many elements come before and after according to the rules will tell you exactly how much buffer you need there to be before and after each number. And I think this 
I think this is a really good starting point to solve this exercise and that is what I would try. That is everything for me for day five. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for day six. Bye!